Hello everyone, Fel Arias here, and welcome to the Dresden Files Cooperative Card Game. I just beat book number one on easy mode, and so now I'm going for book number two. Which means, I get to play as werewolves, I get to play as werewolves. I mean, Karen's still in it, and I think she's in it more than Susan is technically... So, I'm going to go with Billy and Georgia, who are the werewolves. I mean, I'm trying to remember who else was in this book. I think it was still the main, like, three. Murphy, Susan, Billy, Georgia, and Harry. Because we don't meet Michael until the next book. And Michael is amazing. Like, amazing, amazing. And that's also when I get to use the insulting costume. So, I guess I'll start with an extra card because I'm so bad at this game. Anyways, in this book, I fight werewolves! <laughs> As Harry Dresden! <laughs> so... It's pretty interesting, and it turns out there's like three different versions of werewolves, or four? I think there's four. There ends up being four because there's humans who can turn into wolves, like through their natural magic. There's items that can turn them into wolves. There's a curse. And then there are just like people who have sort of supernatural ish blood in them, and so they're kind of wolf-like. That's what the street wolves are. And so, and also there are evil FBI agents in this that shoot at Harry, that shoot at the main character of the book. So I, I think in most books, he ends up getting his butt royally kicked, like it is kicked so terribly in some of these books. But this one mainly revolves around beating things. So to beat them, I need to get these advantages, get these disadvantages gone. Which means I need to probably move this one up. So next round on Harry's turn, I'll discard for fate. And move either this one up or this one up. Depends on what I have available in here. So she has a range three overcome obstacle, which is great. And Billy and Georgia also have a range two to three. Depends on how well I roll. Another fun thing about Billy and Georgia is later on in the books, Harry Dresden, the main character, ends up playing Dungeons and Dragons with them. And at one point in time, they're like, so do you want to be a wizard? And he's like, no, I want to be a barbarian. I just want to hit things really hard. I'm a wizard in real life. I don't need to be a wizard in my imagination. <laughs> and it's great. So cannot take until at least one case has been solved. Well, shit. And my investigation cards used on this case are minus one clue. Because I really hate Marcone, because he's a gangster. So, that's probably why I don't exactly want to rescue him. Makes sense. This one is, when taken, active player draws two cards and add two clues to which wolf is which. Which I can do that, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Oh, this is planning mode. So yes, I want Harry to go first. But I kickstarted the um, board game for this. So that made me very happy. I was. Um, hits cannot be added to either Loop Guru Foe. So it'd be good to get this one out of the way. But this one, it would be better if this one got out of the way. So I think with Murphy, I'm going to start adding clues to things. OK. 
Okay. What are Billy and Georgia's? When you discard for fate points, you may add one hit to the foe at the longest range. Okay, so I want all the foes to have at least one hit on them so I can use their talent. So I don't want to use their talent until I've got, like, damage on them. Let's see here. And right now all attacks are minus one hit, so until I get rid of that I don't want to hit anything. And I can only use this if it will not solve the case. Perfect! Because it won't. Back to Harry. I want to make sure I still have a take advantage card before I discard anything. I do, but oh, it's more expensive. So I actually am going to do this. Move this up one. Because now I can do this, which is going to be more useful right now. Because now I can hit things without so much worry. And also I can discard this and add a hit on them. Which means instead of Harry doing anything, I can just kill these guys straight up. For Murphy, Murphy, Murphy. Have you to take that advantage? Not you. I have you guys to take that advantage after I move it up one more, just in case. I'm going to discard this. Means I'm similarly going to discard this. So let's see. Any, meeny, miny, mo. What card should I discard? And discard this one. There we go. Seven, so I need four points. Eh, yeah, not bad. Discard you. And now I can use this to solve this, which means I get to draw a card with Karen. And they've got so many things that's it if it will not defeat the target. So five hits to something. I'm gonna go with the he the FBI Hexen Wolves. And now I can grab this.
and everything gets hit some. So Karen's turn. I'm going to gather fate using her special. And then on the wolf's turn, I'm going to use their special to add another hit point to everybody. And then Harry's turn. Let's see. I need to solve this, but I can't solve it using Harry. Um, I'm actually going to discard this for fate. No target for my talent. Let's see. Attack defeats the foe. Add two hits to any one foe. Oh, yes. Five. Sucks that it removes. Let's see. Only two hits, so let's just kill these guys. Let's exchange this for fate. And add a hit to them. I should have added it to that one. Damn it. Oops. Does Karen have any case solvies? No, she doesn't. Oh, man. Oops. Five. It's good because if I discard with Karen, add a clue to the case at the longest range, so I can still solve that. Which means I just have to kill something. This card for fate. Pass turn. And ooh. Only a range one. And everybody is out, so again, this comes down to the showdown in order to win. Now I'm just looking for a plus one total on this. And I got it. Victory! Beat book two on easy mode with extra cards. <laughs> now book three, um, unfortunately Karen's in it a little bit if I remember right, but not really. It's mostly Susan and Michael. Though at the same time, this is also where we meet Thomas for the first time. And I'm really, really debating using Thomas instead of Susan. So I'm going to do that. Because yeah, Susan's a bit of a bitch in this book. And I'm going to use insulting costume because Harry... Being the uh, uh, the wonderful person he is, decides that when he's forced to go to a vampire masquerade party, like a masquerade party hosted by actual vampires, he dresses up as a cheesy vampire with a blue suit, pancake white makeup. Fake blood, hair slicked back, and everything. Just because he wants to offend and piss them off. 
Now, mind you, all of them could kill him, but due to the laws of hospitality, they they wait to try. <laughs> oh, but the costume is so just amazing. Costume is just amazing. Okay, so it looks like all of my obstacles are way at the end. Oh, and Susan dresses up like Little Red Riding Hood to, to just that little bit more. Um, and also, we, I could have played Mortimer, but I haven't bought that expansion yet. And Mortimer is a very like minor character right now. But you also get to meet Harry's fairy godmother. Oh man, seriously, look, that's some art from the card where he's the vampire, but unfortunately it didn't show up in my draw, sadly. But for this one, I mainly want to kill shit because there's not many cases to solve. But, let's see... Michael is amazing as usual. Just. He's the Knight of the Cross and he wields uh, Amarachius, which is the Sword of Love and was also known as Excalibur. And he is what. Oh, and this is Thomas and this is Justine. They're a, they're a great couple. Oh, Thomas is also a vampire. Not a blood-drinking vampire. A, a more interesting kind, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, but him and Harry become good friends. Not as good of friends as Butters ends up thinking they are, and Butters a, is a coroner from... A couple books down the road. So we'll get into Butters later, but for now, let's start this off. Let's start with Harry. And I need to get rid of this because all cards that discarded for fate points generate one fewer fate point. Yeah, no. I'm not dealing with that. So. I need to remember what his does. Oh yeah, plus two range. So, one of the reasons why I love Michael. I mean, this is going to give me no fate points. But, it's going to let me flip this. Which is what I need. And this other one, hostages, no hits or clues can be added to cards as at a longer range than this card in its row. So basically this obstacle does nothing right now because of how far back it is. So I was really lucky for that. And if I really wanted to get rid of it, I could use Thomas's family power and, and just like bull rush it. But I don't care that much, so... And play it immediately. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Let's start. Oh, damn it. I forgot he had another one. But let's see here. So I have the chance to possibly get this one with this card, but not gonna push my luck. Um, I think I want to try to kill these red court vamps. Good news, next round I can actually full out kill them with Harry. And now I can use this. Get rid of this. Hmm. 
And I don't see me actually caring that much about this, so I'm going to discard this for fate. I'm going to discard this for fate, so I can move this uh, up. Yes, please. Michael. You're amazing. I love you, man. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Pick a tiger, buy is this one. Yeah, Michael has like 20 billion kids because he will take in anybody in need because he is such a great guy. And his wife, Charity, puts up with it. <laughs> she loves him like an insane amount. And I can't blame her because who wouldn't love Michael Carpenter? Add three hits to one foe in each row. Hmm. That might not be bad. I'm gonna discard this. And then that's gonna kill this thing. Bada boom. When solved, add four hits to Bianca. Well. That's going to be hard considering Bianca's right before it, but discard you so I can move you up. Let's see, and discard you so I can get extra range. Let's see. Huh. Delish. Take one advantage. If you roll a range four, you must spend one additional eight point. Hmm. I do kind of want to move it up one more. But I don't need to move it up one more because Michael has an extra two range. But I'm going to move it up one more anyway. Oh, Michael. I don't have any more advantages, but I don't need fate points. So. Thomas, Thomas, Thomas! Guess I'll have to use this. Means on Harry's turn. When defeated, Harry must discard one card. So I don't want to kill that, which sucks. And I can kill Bianca just by solving this. But... To solve that, I need it to be in first place because of everybody's... <laughs> Screw it. I'm just going to kill her flat out. Bye, Bianca. As your turn, flip this card to add three hits to any one legal foe that has hits on it. Then move that card to the farthest range in its row. Oh, I should have used that so much earlier on Bianca! Shit!
Okay. Oh man, Harry, you have so many cards. Um we need a lot of fate, so change one. Six. I do that, Harry has to discard a card. Oof. Don't really want to make him discard a card. Add two clues to all cases in one row. Or add, just add two clues to a case. This only costs one extra fate point. So I guess I'm going with that. Michael. Range one. I'll solve it. That's good. Because this will still kill it. <laughs> but that means Harry has to discard a card. <laughs> um, that one. <laughs> A very high possibility. <gasps> no, because of this obstacle, so I can't play that. Oh man, Thomas. Oh, this is gonna be rough. I have to trigger the showdown. Wait, no, I'm not ready yet. Because I can pass, pass, and then Harry has. Oh, that'll give me just about as much fate. Or less fate. Yep, triggering the showdown. Oh no, book three. I just need a positive two. <gasps> I got it! I won! <laughs> Victory! But yeah, this game's actually available on Steam, so if anybody wants to get it and play with me, just let me know. But, yeah, let's see. So the next one is... Summer Right. Summer Night. Where Thomas isn't in this one, but Karen plays a major role in this one. And Billy and Georgia are also in it. Let's see, who else is in Summer Night? I think Billy and George are the only other people in it. Really. And it's just Billy, really? Not Billy and Georgia? I mean, if there was a card for Toot... Um, Toot Toot, he's a fairy. That'd be one thing, but he's not really in it. Oh no, I forgot to take off. I shouldn't have this, but... Here's here's an example of the insulting costume I was talking about, the powder blue suit and everything. But I have to go back because... I forgot to take that off. Because he doesn't wear the insulting suit in this game. There we go. Now this one's all about the obstacles. As you can see, there are three. Cannot overcome other obstacles right at the forefront. Fuck. 
All investigate cards are minus one clue. All attack cards with a range of two or more are minus one range. Fuck. When taken, active player and next player in turn order may either draw one card or take one card back from their discard pile. When taken, active player may move any one obstacle range 1-3. Active player draws two cards. So it's actually a good thing that this is here. Because I have to beat it before I can actually conquer the other two. So that's good. Again, this is easy mode. Because <laughs> I suck. <laughs> Let's see, what cards do you have, Karen? Do you have something that a uh, range to two? Nope. How about you, Billy and Georgia? Yes, perfect. Okay, so Billy and Georgia are gonna go first. But playing this game in person with a lot of people is actually a lot funner than playing it by yourself, but I really wanted to just play it because it's been a while. Okay. Hmm. I don't really want to take anything back from my discard pile yet. Minus one range, so I can still hit this guy with this. And not do much damage, but hey, at least I'm doing some damage. Range of two, but I don't really need that yet. That's the problem. When solved, add two hits to Aurora Summer Lady. When solved, Harry draws one card. When solved, add one hit to Aurora Summer Lady. When solved, add three hits to the Aurora Summer Lady. So, need to solve these. Oh, minus one clue, so I can't do that yet. It's not that I can't, it's that I'm not going to, so I guess the only thing to do is get fate back. A uh, fate point there, a uh, clue point. When you discard for fate points, you may add one hit to the foe at the longest range. Okay. It's n definitely not going to defeat him yet. So. Oof. Oh, this is a hard one. I guess I'll discard this. Means I really should... Yeah, let's just get it. Card from my deck. Mm. Card from my deck. Still not a chance to actually kill it. So going to discard. Hmm. That puts it at a minus one range, but Oh, this is so hard. 
because I need to get this. Just going to use this before I forget to. Lloyd Slate in this book was the Winter Knight. So he's basically the human representation for the Winter Court, the Court of the She. Like Mab and Queen of Darkness and so on. So, let's see here. Let's try it. So I gotta get rid of this one. Which is good. Because now I can actually use my investigation cards. But at the same time... Ooh, that would be a good one to use. Limited range, limited range. Uh. There we go. Okay, Harry. Harry, Harry, Harry. I want to move this up, so. It's going to make that guy harder to hit, but at the same time... Gives Murphy a chance to do stuff. I think I'm giving up on getting this obstacle. Hmm. So three. Yeah, discard for fate again with these guys. I can grab this, which means, let's see, I fate. This has the possibility of solving this one. No, wait, no, it doesn't. I'm not good at math. This has the possibility of killing this guy, though. It's not going to, but... Had the possibility. Oh, it costs so much, though. Need fate points.
I'm doing so bad with this one. Going to move it at the very end. Oh, this is... Mm. Not gonna work. I've lost. I was hoping I could get one more hit on her, but I can't. That's the problem. So close. Yet no cigar. <laughs> <laughs> 